Welcome to Bond Park. 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 I'm Sarah Geidlinger. This is the second week of podcast where I'm still not allowed to play with Marshall because of the quarantine. So it's just me introducing Joe Martz today. Joe is a photographer and graphic designer based in Kitchener, Ontario. I actually purposefully picked April 1st as Joe's podcast release date because he is hilarious. If you follow Joe on Instagram, his stories make me laugh on the regular. I absolutely love them. We also, um, <laughs> it gets increasingly dark as this podcast rolls on and I don't mean dark with humor I mean like the light is actually dimming in the evening so there's some jokes about that too anyway let's get to it here's Joe Martz this is our first time yeah. meeting and um, <laughs> the, the reason why I know of you is because uh, I, I'm adoring your photos on Instagram which led to getting into your website which led to kind of following all of your work. And I've DM'd you a few times kind of creepily. I don't know if that's okay. <laughs> okay. The first one was, um, I, and I, again, I love your work. I love everything about it. But when you posted, I think it's Lucy Pullen's, um, our installation, her Kafka installation yep. Yep. at North in downtown yep. Kitchener, sort yep. of corner of Gockle and Gockle Charles. Gockle and Charles, yeah. Right. Um, I was just like, oh, so something's come to my town and I need to know what's going on because I love it. It just spoke to me. It spoke to a lot of people. I know they've had to put up a gate so people can't quite climb up all the way. Oh, really? To the top oh, okay. I've never, I've never actually gotten too close to it. That yeah, they, was they're from... kind about it. I've, I've been too I, yeah, close a it's... few times. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I think I messaged you that first time and just said, where is this? Please tell me everything. Mm. Did you paint it? Who painted it? What's going yeah. on here? Um, and then since then, um, just loving everything that you've been posting. Uh, there's a great photo of the Sears building. Um, yeah, the, I saw a thing in the the I saw the record photographers. They it's d- being dismantled right now. Is it? I'm not happy about it. No, but, but your photos are. <laughs> the, you're, we had um, photographer Mar- Mark Walton on a yep. little while ago, and um, he had Marshall can help me with this piece. He had a um, a gallery exhibition that was about or how architecture changes the second it's the last stone is set. Right. It was called shift shift. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Um, and that's, we all knew when you posted that photo of Sears, of the Sears building, we all knew like, wow, actually we're not going to see this anymore. And it's such a weird it's a, 1970s. It's a gorgeous concrete. building. People, yeah. oh, they're crazy for getting rid of it. It's, the, it's like the only part of that mall that has any character and they're tearing it down. And they're tearing it down. <laughs> Have you seen the plans for what's going? Yeah. It's yeah. a bunch of faux, it's, enormous. it's faux, uh, faux brick and yeah. beam. There's like a water tower and a smokestack that never existed there. It's all, it's like a carnival. It's, I think it's meant <laughs> it's to a mall, catch the so eye. Whatever. Yeah, <laughs> on the way off the highway, I think it's meant to catch people. Yeah. And go, oh, look at this cute little town that this has probably been sitting here for. Yeah, and they decades. they want to put like four high rises behind. Mm-hmm. I don't know if that's realistic or if that's going to happen, but who knows? I think so. that's the way most of those bigger developments are kind of going yeah. now. But you do also do a lot of photography for architecture, right? That's what I mostly do. That's what I've sort of shifted over to. I don't really do much of uh, too much of anything else. I started just. Uh, really just shooting for fun like I, I took I, I went to school for graphic design um and we touched on photography there but we didn't get like really really detailed into it and that was like when we were still using like the dark room I was gonna ask that was this digital yeah and the so like days. at the time I wasn't really into it so I just sort of did what I had to do to pass whenever I'm never really I didn't really enjoy it that much and then it wasn't until after I graduated where something you know clicked sorry for the pun but it just uh I just started to I don't know what it was. I I bought a camera used somewhere, and then I bought a better camera, and then I just kept buying better cameras. I <laughs> mean, um, it just kind of developed into something that uh, that's been something that I've been able to make a little bit of money off of. It's something that I just enjoy doing, which I almost find um, was I find that to be the most beneficial. That I just it's a really great creative outlet that like I can just go out for a couple of hours if there's like you know we we live downtown Kitchener. And like we can kind of sit in our living room and we can kind of see when the sun's going down. And sometimes you just get this like wild, crazy light. And I'm just like, I just get up and I leave for like a half hour. And I wanted to know about that too, because a few of your photos, um, like I've seen those spots, of course. 
and I have seen that light, mm-hmm. I've never once have I gotten out of my car and shot it. Yeah. No. <laughs> I'm just going on my merry way. Yeah. So I really wanted to know, like, what is that process? Are you planning? Are you like, oh, tomorrow I'm going to shoot. I saw like a great photo of the St. Louis Adult Learning Center. <laughs> Like, this is so cool. You know, like, do you think that you're going to go out and do it? Or no, it a lot of the time, the a lot of it is spur of the moment yeah. when I just want to get up to go. Um, but uh, there are other, t- other are times when I'm just like, I just want to get out for a couple of hours. Yeah. So it's just like, it, it's kind of nice at this time of year that it's like, I have a couple hours in the evening free. But like, once like September, October hits, it my amount of shooting goes like way down yeah. because it's yeah. like, it's dark when I get to work. It's dark when I leave work. Yeah. You want to cry. <laughs> or I do. <laughs> yeah, and it's cold, so it's, it's cold, hard to do yeah. that in the winter, and yeah, so. Yeah. What I found so compelling about that uh, photo of uh, Sears at Fairview Park Mall is, one, yes, it reminded me how uninspiring the rest of Fairview Park Mall is compared yeah. to Sears, but also the uh, the brick and the color of the brick. Yeah, those green bricks. Those that... green bricks, and uh, it was so compelling to just uh, kind of immerse myself in that photo and uh, realize how, you know, that thing has been around my whole life. Mm-hmm. And there's still things you don't see until an artist like you photographs. Yeah, them. and it's cool, like, the, the, the shadows that cast on that brick wall, like, as the sun moves, you get these weird, like, wavy, it looks like a wave. Yeah. And it's just kind of really neat. Like, it's just, uh, I don't know when I started noticing it, but when it hit me, I'm just like, this place is gorgeous. Yeah, this is wild. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and then yeah. you look and, yeah, and, like, the, the bay actually has some nice brickwork to it as well. It's nothing like the Sears building, but... Yeah, the rest of the mall is just a mall. Yeah, but now it's you know now it's worse. Now it's worse. <laughs> I, I was just gonna say I don't I don't see quite as much interesting architecture for you know kind of like small town KW. We've got some great stuff and mm-hmm. most of it's documented on your website actually, <laughs> but I haven't seen a lot of that type of thought put into local buildings mm-hmm. where they're trying to integrate the shadow into what you're going to see at different times of the day. Like, oh, yeah. It makes me think of like Mayan runes and how, you know, the shadows yeah, are like calendars a, yeah, and all that kind right, of stuff, a, right? It's a big sundial. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, big sundial, exactly. Yeah. I found the running thread visually through a lot of your work was uh, this incredibly strong geometry. That you yeah. It, um, is that something you're attracted to and that you... Uh, yeah, it's, that's one thing that really stands out with a lot of the work that it's sort of, I've just sort of gradually been doing more of that, that uh, very sort of like almost like a minimalist sort of look to it that's got a lot of heavy heavy lines and I like to use shadows a lot I have a lot of fun with that like I know like when you think about shooting outdoors typically like high noon like between like nine and two or three is like really bad because you get horrible shadows and if you're doing something like shooting a wedding which it's the worst time yeah, that's that's horrible for that for sure. But then at the same time, for doing like fun stuff like architecture, you can actually take really good advantage of that, and you can kind of really make it work for work in your advantage. So I'm just thinking yeah. in general because I do a lot of wedding photography, and I'm thinking that time of day when you're trying to shoot people, you get these very angular nose shadows mm-hmm. that stretch across their whole <laughs> it's like face. Pinocchio. But when you apply that to architecture, that's it what can, you're it can for. almost can accentuate yeah. it in a way. So you're looking for yeah. that kind of. Um, more dramatic mm-hmm. lighting. Like you don't always want that, but at the same time, if that's what you get, you, can, you just got to yeah. work with it sometimes. So. Yeah. I was intrigued with how uh, some of them had this almost illusion to them. I think of the brick wall, simple, like yeah. your most minimal pieces yeah. taken on the corner. There's one, yeah, there's one that I, I think I know which one you might be talking about. Um, it's at UW. I can't remember which building at UW, but I remember I was just... Engineering 5, I was just looking at that. No, one. it wasn't oh, Engineering okay. 5. No, that's a newer one. <laughs> this is an older one. This is like a mid-century building, but it's... Uh, yeah, I was just walking by it, and it was just sort of the way the sun was hitting lots of sun on one side and just a bit of shadow on the other, and you just, it's got different colored bricks, and you just kind of, you just kind of hit it at the right way, and you just, I kind of shot it like right down the middle, and it had a really cool effect to it, and I, 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 people have commented on that one, that's actually one of my favorite pictures, and my friend said one time, he's just like, it's a brick wall, and you made it look gorgeous, like, mm-hmm. how do you do that? And like, what um, really blows <laughs> me away is how you live in a city your whole life like I have, and um you don't feel like you've looked at something that much or notice even when you when you are in its presence. I'm thinking of Uptown Waterloo mm-hmm. yeah. and how I think there's a shot of that old building on King Street that um, it used to be like maybe the post office or something like the old post okay. office. Like it's got a, a peak to it. To there, there's something be. about that that just uh, kind of blows me away how okay. you don't give it any thought really yeah. Yeah. Um, ever until somebody has captured it <laughs> and then you realize how just how incredibly familiar it is yeah 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 i've 
Oh, sorry. No, so, no, go ahead. I was going to say, that's the game that me and my daughter play, actually, <laughs> is um, we, you might be too young to remember, like, Chickadee Magazine. We used to get I that. remember that. Oh, okay. Yeah. Chickadee Magazine was the bomb. I loved it. <laughs> and on the back, sometimes they had these macro shots of things like a grasshopper's knee or, oh, okay. um, you know, the the indent of, uh, of the number one on a die or something like that. And mm. you had to figure out what the photo was of. Okay. And I find we're playing that game with your photos. Uh. <laughs> where I'm like, I recognize this, but I'm not sure what it is. Mm. And then we kind of try and beat each other to, uh, to try and figure out where it is. It's a great <laughs> game to play, actually. But with that, um, like I've seen, I don't know, countless, countless photos of the Seagram's buildings. Yeah, I, that's, I've taken that's the thing I've, I've, I've noticed of like what buildings I've shot mm-hmm. around town and how many and there's a lot mm-hmm. that I should probably stop taking pictures of because eh, well I don't think so I can only do so much I think I don't think so because this happened to me tonight I was I had a busy week and I thought okay I'm familiar with your work but I'm gonna just flip through your website before you guys get here and just take a look at a few more things and I'm flipping through and I'm like that's weird Joe took a photo of a blue sky it doesn't <laughs> seem like his thing I'm like all right maybe he just really liked the sky that day and then I, I'm scrolling across. And I'm like, okay, Seagram's building, blah, blah, blah. And it took me a second because, you know, the squares weren't lining up. The, <laughs> the, the gallery of the Who is this hack? Up. Yeah. And then I thought, oh, man, I didn't realize you took a very minimalistic photo of the Seagram's loft. It's iconic. We all know what it is. Or the Seagram's actually, sorry, the distillery part of the building with tons of blue sky as a negative space. Okay. And okay. it's one photo and it didn't register in my mind that that's what I was looking at because nobody takes that. Okay. Everyone takes the shutters or the entire building in golden hour or whatever. <laughs> but I hadn't seen, <laughs> yeah, we've got words for all this stuff, right? But I'd never seen actually something that creative done with it before. Okay. Um, and I just really appreciate that. Uh, it's, I think you have like a, maybe you're not even quite sure how amazing this gift is that you have <laughs> because they're pretty special. They really are. Oh, thanks. <laughs> Yeah, the Primitive Institute too. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. one. That's that's, that's like a, I feel like people either love that or hate it, and I think it's I love it. I love it, and the photo that you have on your site of the Primitive Institute um, is incredibly dark. Everyone tries mm. to get lighter mm-hmm. photos. I've, I've been trees. trying to do that a bit lately too. It's, it's just so like enjoyable. instead of just like blowing the highlights yep. out and just like ruining let's the, the pictures yeah, let's the other way. i'm let's just like just, just go with the shadows and yeah. trying to work with that and it's a little more fun sometimes so it's just it's different it's just sort of it's a different, different approach so i don't have the same the same sort of thing over and over yeah. again so yeah it's kind of fun to yeah. I, I like for the most part the absence of people yeah that's that's one thing too yeah i don't uh, i don't have a lot of people in my shots and that's one thing i've always almost wanted to start getting more people in there but i've mentioned that before but some people have said that I shouldn't. <laughs> um, like, I think you should, as a creative person, you should try. I, there's some like for like doing like if I'm doing some commercial work, right. some architectural stuff. It's it's actually nice to have that human element in there. They like, just have like a bit of a. They're never sort of staying still. It's like you take a shot at like you know a tenth of a second, you just get that bit of a mm-hmm. blur, and it, it actually adds a lot to it. It's actually pretty cool. Um, but when I'm just out shooting for fun, it's hard. To do, to do that especially in like the middle of the day because that's you know one tenth of a second in the middle of the day is and you're just going to blow everything out anyway so yeah you probably are um and it sounds like the way that you're shooting is more you're a little bit of a ghost moving through town like you said when you're ready to go and the light is hitting and you're looking at yeah. the window yeah you're kind of on your own you're grabbing your stuff and you're out there or are you walking with your family what are you doing it's usually by myself yeah because like yeah. my wife knows this like that I'll catch up. Yeah. <laughs> we'll put it that way. <laughs> so, yeah. Are there certain colors that you're attracted to? Like, in, in I was pictures? going through my site or my Instagram feed one time, and it just sort of seemed like I had this blue cast for, mm-hmm. like, ever. <laughs> so I don't know if it's the sky or if it's just uh, just the way I'm just sort of, like, sublim- or like of subconsciously, like, processing my images. I put, like, a cooler tone to them. I don't know, but it, the blue seems to be in there for sure. So And I do like brutalist and, like, concrete. So that might have something to do with it, like a lot of grays and right. and sort of cooler tones like that. So yeah. I do kind of find that with photography too. When you're doing it for enjoyment, sometimes I'll find, okay, everything in my Instagram feed or wherever has been orange for 12 shots or it's yeah. been a bit of a purple hue. And it's either maybe something you're attracted to or you've seen what your last thing is, so you're sort of seeing it again. It's mm-hmm. that something like that um, illusion of repetitive nature <laughs> that's coming through in your mind, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so I wanted to just try to get back to where you started. Um, so I know you work as a graphic artist. Graphic designer, designer, yeah. Designer. Yeah. And where'd you go to school? Uh, Conestoga College. Awesome. Mm-hmm. And you're born and raised here? Yep. Never really left. Me neither. <laughs> I love it. Why go? It's all here. Yeah. 
Uh, so I work at a tech company uh, called Ovic Networks. Um, and so I'm basically, I'm, there's a couple of, there, there's myself and then there's another front end developer. He, until I started about 10 months ago, he was sort of, he did all the design um, and they were getting to the point where like they're growing like crazy. And so they needed, he needed help especially. So they needed someone with, with, with some graphic design background as well um, to take on that. And uh, I landed in a, it's a pretty cool place. Yeah. <laughs> I really can't explain how great the place is. I mean, it's, I've never worked in the tech industry and that's where I was kind of, I was kind of nervous about it uh, just because in my whole design career, I've worked, uh, I started out in a print shop. I've worked in a couple of design studios, um, but only on the print side. I never just with the, when I graduated, it was like the internet existed, but it was just sort of in its infancy. So we never really learned any of that. And so right. every job I had, there was never, that was never part of it. So I never got really got into it. it yeah. Bit, yeah. And so it just sort of like, um, and then I was working for a company in Waterloo as an in-house designer. They made uh, residential Cedar Playhouses, which is a crazily uh, competitive industry, if, I bet. if you believe it or not. No, I believe it. I believe <laughs> um, it. Uh, so after, I was there for about seven years, uh, got bought out by a company in Dallas. So I had to, I worked for them from home for about a year. Um, and working from home for me is not great, at least working for a company. Right. Um, like working for my own, doing my own freelance work is fine because that's my own work. I'm my own boss for that sort of work. But like if, when I'm working for someone with a team, I have to be with them. It's just the way I work. Like I can't be, you know, I just, I just, uh, I'm, I'm a bit of a, a, uh, uh, what's the word? Keep to myself. Like a hermit? Her, not a hermit. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, because I'm a bit of a hermit and most photographers maybe are. In a, maybe a, in a bit of a way. <laughs> yeah. um, but um, I still like to be around people. Right. I can't, well, I don't know, I'm not thinking of this word. Introvert. 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 Oh my gosh. That's what's you know what? wrong with me. There, they, there's a company that sells t-shirts for introverts that has a, a wheel like on the Mac and it says processing. Yeah. <laughs> it takes you a minute to think of the word when you're on the spot. <laughs> That's good. Yeah. So, yeah, so I, I was with them for, yeah, for 11 months and then I wasn't really enjoying it. Um, and so then they called me one, one, one morning and were just like, so we have to talk. I'm like, this doesn't sound it doesn't good. Sound good yeah. <laughs> like I'm thinking, you know, this is about, and yeah. it kind of led to like, yeah, well this, you know, we want everyone in, you know, in the office. I'm like, I totally get it. And so I'm sure if I would have said, hey, I'll move to Texas, they would have kept me. But I wasn't, it wasn't, I uh, was not wanting to move to Texas. Um, and I didn't really enjoy the place that much anyway. Um, so they let me go. And then I was out of work for, it was just a, just over six months. Um, and that was tricky just because that whole not working in the tech and just, or, or the like, sort of like web design, that sort of thing. Um, very, very limited knowledge with that. So right. it kind of freaked me out. I'm just like, who's going to want me? Um but luckily they did and, did and it was, yeah, yeah, it's been amazing. So yeah. So that's where I'm right now and learning so did, quite a bit. And did you have to dive headfirst into the tech part of it that you were missing from before? Or would you uh, kind of... It's sort of a, uh, working into it slowly. Um, I'm taking some courses on it now that I get to kind of go at my own pace, which is kind of nice, but they still need just sort of like, um, just sort of like traditional graphic work in a way so it's which is kind of nice that they have someone that can that yeah. i've got that so much of that in my background so it's been it's been kind of nice so are you using like illustrator or what are you typically doing your work in uh mostly InDesign, photoshop oh, okay. illustrator yeah those are the top three i want to be good at illustrator but i'm not <laughs> I'm really good at autocad but it's not that creative <laughs> so did you early on maybe in school recognize that incredibly strong um sense of composition that you have and how um it ties into your architecture photography. i didn't Did really you? didn't really notice it no because i wasn't really into photography until like i said till i was after after i graduated um but the more i shot the more i felt that like the composition is definitely like my, my strongest suit i think yeah um that's what sort of makes my photos work i think so the way i frame them the way i compose them so. and so that, that would have been influenced by your the skills you learned yeah, design. I think so. Because yeah. I wouldn't, I'm, I'm like even when I when even when I work with my with like my graphics work, it's more of a, I'm like I have, I trust rulers like crazy. I work in grid patterns. Like I don't, 
I'm very neat and tidy, I guess you could say. Like I have very, I follow a lot of vertical and horizontal lines in my work. So that it's... makes a lot of sense when you say that, and I'm picturing your photography. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah, to it's me. almost yes. mathematical too. Yeah, in a way. A yeah, bit. yeah. I do find um, I don't want to offend anybody out there, but I do find that that type of composition that you're creating, it kind of can't be taught. I find that people either have that or they don't have it. Mm. Um, sometimes people get lucky, just keep kind of following a rule of thirds or using their negative space or following the eye pattern. But, um, but those different angles and like that, that one of the Seagram's law, um, distillery building that kind of took me by surprise. Mm -hmm. I, it's not something that people usually go out and be like, well, I'm going to make sure I get this building with the blue shutters and I've got the yeah. one third of the page and yeah. or one third of the, of the screen. Um, so I'm, I actually kind of think it can't be taught. I think you mm. just kind of have an eye for it. Would you agree <laughs> with that? Or are you Maybe just going out there kind of trying bit. it out? Cause yeah, I mean, yeah, I don't know where I started doing it. Like I didn't. I didn't learn it from anyone in particular. Mm -hmm. I just, I don't know, like I would just start to just see, I, I, when I've gotten into the habit of when I get to shoot some, when I'm at, when I'm somewhere looking at something and I'm shooting something, I'm always looking around. Like even when I'm walking down the street, like I'm never straightforward. Right. Like I'm just like looking yeah. like, a, I'm like <laughs> a, yeah, it's like squirrel. Look away. Yeah, so, yeah. Like I'm just, <laughs> I was every, just about to say everything. That I, I just because it's like yeah. to see what else might be there mm -hmm. as opposed to what I think I'm there for. So it's just you can always find the sort of interesting things. There's like so many it. people not looking. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, it's true. Yeah. yeah. Especially in our day of phones. Oh know, my gosh. Age of phones. <laughs> yeah. I recently saw some of your photographs taken at the Kitchener Blues Festival that you did mm -hmm. for the Waterloo Region Record, mm -hmm. and I think about how incredibly challenging it must be to photograph live music. I think about. There's everything from the equipment, the microphones, to the crowd, to, um, you know, the way, uh, you know, lots of open mouths and closed eyes, mm -hmm. uh, you know. Uh, mm -hmm. So how do you approach that? How do you, how do you capture those uh, brilliant photos I saw of the Northern Pikes, for example? Um, so that one, yeah, they, they messaged me like the weekend before and said, are you available over the weekend to maybe shoot something? And I'm like, sure i'm you know between this and this i, I you know i could do something and can i walk there yeah yeah <laughs> it's winter. actually kind of nice because i live right downtown so <laughs> yeah. i could just walk there it was, it was beautiful um and i would never really been to the blues festival before the music was great um but anyway so i'm trailing i'm i'm rambling um so they messaged me like friday afternoon at like three o'clock i'm like so this is what we needed to do so i'm like okay yeah i can i can do there were two jobs they needed me to do um so i did that uh the, the blues fest in the afternoon and there was another story in the morning that i covered real quick um, and then I never really had, I, I've done work for the Waterloo Region Arts Awards before. I used to do their photography of the event. I haven't done that in a while. I kind of just sort of moved on from that. Um, but I had to shoot some performances there and it is, it's kind of fun actually, because the lighting is pretty dramatic. Um, and you can get some pretty cool like expressions on the faces and like the way they're playing the instruments. You can get some pretty good, uh, yeah, that one of good photos. Uh, Oh, sorry. I saw several of them. They're just excellent. The expressions. I know what you mean. Yeah. Yeah. And the one, the one actually made the front page of the paper, like right at the top. It was great. Um, I was pretty, I was happy with that shot. I thought it was pretty good. Um, it wasn't the one I wanted them to use, but that's not up to me. So yeah. Was, yeah. It, <laughs> no, Ex excellent um, one of Kevin Kane. Uh, yeah. With the Northern Pikes and yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. Uh, so that it's just, uh, I remember even like the night before, I, I just sort of hit me. I'm just like, I don't have a media pass. Like, am I even going to be able to get in <laughs> yeah. or even get up close? Because I'm just like... Yeah. Just show up and say, hey, I'm Joe. Yeah. It's like, I, <laughs> just trust me. Here's an email. <laughs> um, so I emailed the guy back. He's like, no, nah, you should be fine. And then I, I'm like, all right, I'm sure it'll be okay. Because it's all free anyway. It's mm -hmm. just, uh, they just have a bunch of tents downtown. And I'm walking towards, they had three separate, they had like me, they wanted me to get there at three o'clock and shoot for like an hour or so. And so there were three tents that had performers at that time. So I'm getting close to Victoria Park. I'm like, I'll just do that first, go up to City Hall, I'll go down to King and Frederick, and then I'll come home. And then I get to Victoria Park, and there's like a lineup from like the clock tower to like Joseph Street. I'm like, are you kidding me? Like, I'm not waiting in this. No. I'm like, I, this is whatever place is going to be, because this is not going to go well. Yeah. I'm not going <laughs> to jump a fence here and, you know, get booted. Um, yeah, there was a huge crowd for Northern Pikes. It was, Northern, it, was, yeah. it was for the Northern Pikes, yeah. yeah. And so I just went up, uh, went downtown, um, and I wasn't sure about how close I could get. 
Turns out you can just literally walk right up front and just yeah. nobody. At, the, at, the, at first, I'm just like, oh, people are going to be annoyed. I'm just no, like. That's the KW I, way. I'm people just like. It's the Canadian way, but it's the KW way. You don't. But you just get in, then you, you did. Get, and I'm you there. Get at the end of the line, yeah. even if you don't know what the line's for. <laughs> yeah. I also think that if you look like you're supposed to be there, everybody else buys into that's it. That's the like, thing. I got the big giant lens. Yeah. Now, so I'm just like, they'll, they'll, they'll be fine. You um, so you just, it yeah. Press. yeah, I'm a designer. Yeah. I could come out, I could make myself as press. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> um, yeah. So it's just, it's just a matter of just kind of going up there, um, trying to, you can like the, the microphones and like the instruments can sort of be like a pain in the, a- pain yeah. in the ass. Yeah. Um, but sometimes you just got to frame yourself around that because you just can't, you can't avoid it. Um, so you just kind of have to make it work with the, with the pictures. Um, yeah, I was lucky. I had, uh, the couple weeks ago, I actually, I broke my telephoto lens, like just full out broke it. Sorry. I mean, I've, I've, uh, Sorry to hear that. I've dropped lenses from like, from the tripod, from like the trunk of my car and they're fine. And then this one time I put my camera down, it falls four inches and it just starts rattling. Just it's it's making yeah. noises that it should not make. And it's just grinding anyway. Mm-hmm. So I had to borrow a friend's lens. So thankfully I was able to borrow like basically the same focal length. Um, and so I was just able to go, go right up there and, yeah, so I, like I said, I had three different sites. I went to four, actually, because there's another guy doing, like, a little children's show. So I did him. Air Traplin. Air Traplin, yeah. yeah. Right. <laughs> he had bubbles. Yep, and always everything. recognizes him. He's like our Mr. Rogers, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I had to, and I had to write the bylines, too, which is, I had to, so I had to, like, look up who was performing. I actually had to Google the members of the Northern Pikes. I had to look up pictures. I'm like, okay, that's that guy, and that's that guy, and that's yeah. that guy. That's pretty cool, though. Cause, you cause, then. Yeah, because, yeah. Cause, yeah. Yeah, so I had to do all that. That was that was a lot of fun. So I was only there for, like I said, for like maybe an hour. But yeah, it's just a matter of just uh, just going up there and knowing that I have the ability to to, to compose a shot well. Um, so I didn't. It wasn't a. I was I was completely confident that I could get some pretty cool shots, and I and I think I did. So it was it was a lot more fun than I thought it would be. So you mentioned yeah, you live in downtown Kitchener. Mm-hmm. What do you see down there architecturally? Like what 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 do you see? A real mishmash of. Um, buildings, you know, there like our city hall, kitchen city hall, is so different to yeah. There's many of them. there's a lot of there's a lot down there. A lot of um, history, but a lot of just uh, there's a lot of really nice ones, and yeah. there's a lot of ugly ones. Like I've shot the Google building, yeah, that's one that I've shot like a million times. Um, it's just got that facade that just can get the even on like a cloudy day, it does cuts because all that glass is so angled that it can just get some really really cool reflections. So I've shot that a million times. Uh, <laughs> It's Kitchener City Hall I've done quite a bit. Um, and then there's Market Square, which is like, they just got to demo that whole place. <laughs> it's the yeah. ugliest building I've ever seen, I think. Um, but there's even like a King and, King, and, King and Benton, or King and Frederick. King and Frederick and Benton, I guess, because yep. that's where. Uh, there's the old TD Bank, which is the Krabby Joe's now. Of all things, right. it's got to be a Krabby Joe's. That building is gorgeous, and that... it's wasted on a Krabby Joe's restaurant. <laughs> now, wasn't that building... <laughs> The original city hall, or did they tear down? No, the, the original, original city, hall? city hall is where Market Square is, I believe. Oh, I thought it was on this side. Like I thought no, it was on the, the north. They side. saved the clock tower and they just demoed yeah. everything. Oh, else. Well, yeah. there was a big stink when they did it. That was back in the '70s, so yeah. it was before I was even alive. Um, and then, and then it was they moved from there to 22 Frederick, which they're painting gray now, which is interesting. Um, and then they moved to the new uh, city hall, just over on Gockle or King and Gockle. So what I find out is how the uh, market square and the King center used to both be malls. And I think they did. Okay. Yeah. That's and where now, we went. We yeah. On yeah. The bus and we went, I need a record. I need a shoe. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and, and so much of uh, what I experienced in my teens and twenties, uh, just doesn't exist anymore. Mm-hmm. Like the arcades, the record stores, the, um, yeah. Yeah. What? I remember going to Zappers quite a bit in high school. Oh, okay. Cause I went to high school at St. Mary's. Yeah. Um, yeah. And 305 King, that's another one that I've shot a lot of. And people probably think that's really boring. What is that? It's that King in Water. Yeah. Um, it's just basically, it looks like a cube. It's got kind of gridded windows. Oh, yeah. Um, there's a Gilt Restaurants in there. Yeah. Uh, Pure Juice Bar, I think, is the other place in the basement. Not the basement, the main floor. Um, but it's, it's, it's a mid-century building. Um, and it's just, again, if you just get it at the right light, you got some really cool reflections. It's just got a nice... It's got lines, so you know I'm, I'm attracted it's to it. It's not really attached to anything else. It's sort of that's, standalone. It's right? on its own, yeah, yeah. Wasn't and so the radio station in there for a while. It was. It yeah. was on the. Okay. How about the, the old factories? Floors. Have you photographed Rumpelfeld and? Uh, I've been in Rumpelfeld. Yeah. On my side. Beamer yeah. box. Tell us everything. 
<laughs> I've been to a few. Yeah, so be, I didn't get into Beamer. I got into, I got into the Coffin Building before they fixed that up, and that was actually pretty cool. Um, I remember when I, it was when they they had started the Reno, and they had, you could go and see like the model suites that they had built, and so you would go in this entrance, and they had it fenced off, so you couldn't really get into the older part that they hadn't touched yet but there was a space that was exactly my width that i could fit through (laughs) through the fence so i kind of got through there and actually got some really cool shots from there oh that's great which is kind of neat um what else have i been in Uh, that dilapidated hotel in preston you know that building the one that's they say is haunted Mm -hmm. yeah i haven't been in there that'd be incredible yeah that's nothing tell me everything i don't know i've only they've got it all boarded up because it has been broken into it's got like hot springs in the basement (laughs) Yeah, really? they they apparently I don't know if it's haunted, but yeah, yeah it'd be kind of cool to see the inside of that. I remember sure. getting pictures. It looks really of, dangerous. I get I got pictures. I shot a roll of black and white film, um, of Barra Castle before they tore that down, um, and that was so they're building a Barra. They, they're building a new apartment building right now. There, I can't remember what it's called Barra Suites or something. Mm. Um, but it was an old apartment building that looked like a castle, and like every unit was different. In, was that in Kitchener or in yeah, Queen, Queen Street? Yeah, Queen and Cortland. Oh, yeah. So when I was a teenager, if anybody lived in there, it was like... Yeah, and then when I went cool, there... Half cool, half scary. Yeah. It was... Yeah, I went there <laughs> and uh, it would it, it had been abandoned and you could get inside and I was kind of walking around the building. I'm like, oh, I could totally walk inside there. But then I'm like, I'm either going to like fall through a floor or yeah, something. Is today, is the, today the day? Is this how I die? <laughs> that's Getting right. this building? Yeah, and then right. just like, and I've heard stories. I'm like, there might be people living in there. Yeah. They don't want me in there. Yeah. And um, yeah, so I wasn't really into that urban exploration thing where people would break into like, you know, worn down places. And it's kind of neat. But at the same time, like when I when I take pictures, I want to, th- I think about like, would someone want this hanging in their living room or something? Oh, that's a good way to look And then like, yeah, do you yeah. want to go and find a bunch of needles on the ground and take a picture of that? Like, I well, just don't not, see, to, to me, that something. that's just not my thing though. Yeah. I mean, that's just, I never really got into that. I remember once going down to the Don Valley Brickworks um, mm-hmm. when that hadn't, they've, they've fixed that all up oh, and yeah, that's all cleaned up. Now. Um, but you could go into that before when it was all abandoned. And I, I remember going down there, I think I'm sneaking in. And I'm like, is someone going to like get me in trouble? And then <laughs> yeah. I, I kind of look in a window and there's like three people there with tripods. I'm like, all right, oh, I'm yeah, fine. This is okay. <laughs> yeah. So it's just sort of like, yeah, everyone did it. So I do kind of like that. Actually, we've, we've talked to a few artists so far who, um, uh, like, so the first photographer we talked to is Sarah Flyzik. She's a young woman who takes photos, um, uses a lot of film and prints them and soaks them in like bodily fluids. So they're, they're wow. wild. They're, yeah, they're wild, but they're beautiful yeah, they and were, yeah. they're colorful and they're weird and they're <laughs> fun. And she actually doesn't do it for the shock value. She does it because she's just so interested in what's going to happen when she mixes A with B and yeah. what she's going to end up with. Um, so more of a respect than a like, guess what I put on this one. You know, it's not like exposing this crazy idea that she has, right? And I kind of love that about your work. Like you're talking about, like I don't, I'm not breaking into the dark parts of our city and finding out what's going on, mm-hmm. how this building is falling apart. I'm respecting what we all see when we're out there, mm-hmm. and I want to share it with everybody because yeah. I see it this way. And when yeah. you're, if you see it the same way when you're out on your walks with your family or yeah. the secret introvert walks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've actually I've started to. I've made a lit. I made a, a Google map of buildings that I want to shoot. That's a great idea. So I'm like, if I'm like, if I'm out somewhere and I see something, I like actually take a picture of my phone and I, I like physically make a note to myself to say, put this on the list. Right. Because and I, there's been a few times where I've said like, go at this time of day because that's when the light hits it a certain mm-hmm. way. Um, but I've. Yeah, I started this list, I want to say like six months ago, and I don't think I've checked anything off. I just keep adding to it. Yeah. It's just like I open up the map and it's just those little those little map markers. Pins, it's just yeah. little, there's like, <laughs> like a million of them. So there's a lot to do. You know, this yeah, might be I, a difficult question to answer, but so at the record, there's a photographer named Matt McCarthy. Yep. You know, his work. And when I look at the record, I can immediately tell it's a Matt McCarthy photo before, yeah, I, so see can his, I. I, before I see his name. Yeah. And just to give a bit of a description of what I see is that let's say it's a portrait style uh, photograph where it's a female rugby player on a field looks like kind of a dark bit of an ominous sky very dramatic yeah but it looks incredible right and yeah. the composition and everything is a, a very powerful um i have no idea what i'm how matt is achieving that mm-hmm. but more so how i instantly know it's a matt mccarthy photo mm-hmm. do you have any insight on how photography works and how that happens for a, a viewer like me 
Uh, I think it's just the way the way that the photographer shoots for one thing, the way they compose their images, uh, it could be their subject matter, the way they process their images. I mean, people have told me that like they can tell shots of mine just by looking at the shot without knowing that it was me. Um, but yeah, I'm the same way with Matt, just the way he, the way he lights his pictures. He actually shot a picture of my family for the paper once. That's great. Sort of side story. We, we got a, I got this handwritten note um from this like developer in toronto saying he wants to buy my house because whatever he wants to sell it and make money and whatever drive up the real estate prices yep. and so i like sort of sarcastically tweeted it and then the record reporter saw it and said hey can we do a story on this i'm like okay and so <laughs> and we, were, a great family portrait? we were on the front page of the paper <laughs> about awesome. and how like everyone in our neighborhood probably got the exact same note yeah and, probably yeah, yeah. it's pretty funny yeah. so <laughs> on, on assignment have you had to fo- do much photography for a story where uh, there's something of a of a somber tone like uh, perhaps um there's been a loss or something you have to photograph where no i haven't done like i said i haven't done a lot for the record for that sort of thing most of my work involves uh buildings and not people which is kind of nice because they don't talk back they cooperate, <laughs> they cooperate for the most <laughs> part yeah. they don't ask you the number one question that people ask photographers which is what do i do with my hands <laughs> <laughs> everyone becomes hyper Just aware of their hands when they're getting their photo taken um, i've actually had to start doing the uh, headshots of people at work okay and so i had uh, i had a pro photographer come in to give me some basics on on doing headshots and like that was a big thing is like i don't know what to do with hands yeah. and like even like i i've shot weddings before and I have given that up because that is not for me. It is a lot of work. It's so much it's work. It's way more work than people give it, than it's people actually, realize. It's um, your emotional support for the day. Yeah. Yeah. You really are. You <laughs> are there to help everyone and I, for everything. I've never had, I never had a bad experience with the no. wedding and I'm like I think I'm due so I'm, I'm just gonna get out. Yeah. <laughs> get out again. It's good. Well, I've said to Sarah who's a wedding photographer yeah. how uh, I would find it so intimidating. The stakes are so high. Like yeah. there's, there's no retake of that day right no no it's um... well, what i've said is brutally honest what i've said to marshall is um i might walk away from an eight to ten hour day shooting a wedding with one photo that i'm happy with yeah i know you're they're gonna be happy with it mm-hmm. anytime i see a photo of me with my kids or my husband and we're having fun I'm like oh this is great this is awesome you know yeah. i never think of my hands and what they're doing <laughs> um but as a photographer you walk away with hopefully one that you're thinking okay i'm glad yeah. i was there because i took this one yeah. photo we had this one moment you know yeah um, so for, but to follow up on Marshall's question about, um, covering for the paper, would you say that the Blues Fest is like the most human work that you've gotten into or do you do more stuff like that? That's probably the most yeah. I've done. I mean, I've done work for, uh, like special events and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Like event coverage. Um, I've done some stuff for Grand Magazine. They have this, they have sections called crowd appeal and you just oh, yeah. go to events. I've accidentally and, been in that. Oh, have you? Yeah. And you're just like, hi, can I take your picture <laughs> yeah. and get, and get your name and like, get your name wrong and, yeah. like 9,900 <laughs> or 999 people have a, out of a thousand are like, yes, please. And then some people are like, no. Yeah. <laughs> um, I always find that so interesting because yeah. I always ask. And some if, people have event. said, but I don't want, I don't want you to use, use my name. Just so like, I haven't gotten well, that one, but I've gotten the full on, no, thank you. I'd prefer if you didn't take my photo. And then I'm distracted for the day thinking, where are you supposed to be right now? <laughs> what are you? supposed to be up to you're yeah yeah because there's be been here. people that's like you can take my picture but not use my name like no. well then i can't use a picture yeah. sorry and uh, unknown person, on. special friend yeah like yeah you're supposed to say. yeah <laughs> let's make up a name Jane. it's, all, it's almost Jane like yeah. magic to me I, I watched matt mccarthy one time he came to the kw bilingual school where we had a holocaust survivor named max eisen so here he is at the end of a room with a gray wall behind him and the whole crowd of young students all like take up most of the room so matt comes in part way through and doesn't really have a choice but to stand at the back of the room mm-hmm. and zooms right in and was there for minutes and left and then the photo i saw in the paper was absolutely incredible <laughs> yeah so clearly photographers at your level have this ability to step into a situation situation even briefly and mm-hmm. get exactly yeah like even to get. even at the blues festival there was somewhere like i just it was the the first set uh, that I went to at Kitchener City Hall, the stage there. Um, and it was, I had a lot of space. And I'm just like, okay, this guy's, he he had a lot of uh, a lot of really great expressions. Um, so I went and blasted off a bunch. And then, like, I don't like to overshoot things. Like, when I am out shooting, like, a building, like, I don't like to take 
you know, 50 shots. And so like, hopefully those one images yeah. is painful. It is. Yeah. And like you want to get it right the, the first time. And like, yeah, you don't want to have, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And I don't want to, you know, I got to save the shutter clicks on my camera. Yeah. I don't want this thing to break. <laughs> <laughs> um, but like with, 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 uh, when you're shooting people, you kind of have to like, take account for like when they blink or have like a really weird expression on their mm -hmm. face. So I blast off a bunch and just kind of go through them and it's easy to pick out the ones that are great and, um, ones that are not great. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, it was sort of the same sort of thing. Like I remember going in and just sort of boom, 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 taking a bunch of shots and just walking out and just like, I know I, I knew I got some, which was, which is a good feeling. So Psst, this is an ad Italians believe in the old adage, waste not want not less is more simplicity and top quality ingredients are the essence of Italian cooking, says Carmine Cacciopoli of Vincenzo's in Waterloo. It has been over five decades since Vincenzo and Rita Cacciopoli opened up the small family business in their home. Because of Vincenzo's longing and passion for fine foods of his homeland, primarily serving the small Italian community in Waterloo region, that was Vincenzo's dream. Achieving that dream was the result of a strong work ethic and an equally strong commitment to their customers and community. Owned and operated by brothers Carmine and Tony Cacciopoli, Vincenzo's has a bustling old world market feel, promising impeccable food down every aisle with international flavors from around the world, like Caribbean, Spanish, and Korean, to name just a few. From fresh produce, homemade pastas and sauces, seafood, deli meats, and cheese, to hard to find imported foods, oils and vinegars, and a cafe with a gelato bar. Vincenzo's truly has something for everyone, along with a wide selection of gluten-free, diabetic foods, and vegetarian options. Check out the sandwich bar and build your own sandwich, starting with a croissant, Italian panini, or a ciabatti bun. With delicious items and toppings like parma prosciutto, hot genoa salami, smoked salmon, jalapeno havarti, pickles and onions to sun-dried caponata, honey cup mustard, and one of Vincenzo's spicy favorites, the bomb. That stuff's really good. It takes great dedication to bring fantastic, fresh, fine foods from around the globe to Warley region for the past 50 plus years. Vincenzo's puts a lot of emphasis on the word quality, and you'll see it in how they run their business and taste it in their products. It's the something more you're looking for. So live the Bella Vita at Vincenzo's, located at the Bauer Building on the corner of Allen and Caroline Streets in Waterloo. During these challenging times, everyone deserves a taste of luxury, so create tonight's indulgence from the little things you love. Right now, let Vincenzo's help you with your shopping needs through online ordering with either pickup or delivery options. Check their site, vincenzosonline.com, for current shopping hours. Call them at 519-741-1437 or email them at info at vincenzosonline.com. We'll also link to their website in our show notes. Now back to Joe Martz. We're sitting in the gonna, dark I now. was going to ask for candles. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I'm sorry, Marshall. That's okay. No, it's been great. The mood. <laughs> um, can you talk about the growth that you've seen in your own photography? Like, I'm sure if you look back at your first photos, you know, you took them. Yeah, yeah, I've uh, they've gotten better. <laughs> um, I used to do a lot of... I, when I first started doing architectural work, I did a lot of work for a company in town. Um They've changed names since because they've been bought. They were Entermodal Engineering. Oh, yeah. Um, and they've been bought like twice since. Um, but I did a lot of work for them. And I remember like a couple years ago, I was like sort of revamping like my website and my portfolio. And I'm like, oh, I've got a ton of pictures I did for Entermodal that I could maybe use. And I look through like I did so many projects for them. And I look at them now, I'm like, these are all not good. <laughs> like, why did they keep using me? This is why it's important, though. It's like it's how an artist saves their sketchbooks, right? So yeah. You see and then, how you've, how you've and there's, yeah, and there's another point where I was like going through my work and I'm just like, I'm like literally running out of space on my hard drive. So I'm just like, I'm just going to go through my pictures and get rid of the, the clunkers. And like part of me wishes I still had them. But then at the same time, like, eh, you get to kind of see the progression you've made. Yeah. But um, what I like with uh, musicians over decades is how you can hear in their early work how hard they're trying, mm -hmm. right? And then later you can realize like they, like Ann Wilson of Heart, like at some point learned restraint in her voice. And it was an even more powerful thing yeah. when as an artist matures. And uh, I, I imagine you've seen that in your own photography where uh, I'm not trying to put words in your mouth, but maybe you're trying really, really hard. And then at some point you something clicked for you mm -hmm. and felt more natural and, yeah yeah like yeah. i found recently too where like um where i'm out and i think something's gonna work and i'll like get as far as i'll have like i'll get my tripod out and i'm like framing stuff up and i'm just looking through the viewfinder and like before i even hit the shutter i'm just like this isn't working mm -hmm. <laughs> like, don't even bother like i'm not even gonna there's been a few times where i'm just i'm about to hit the shutter i'm just like and i just think i'm like well, what am i gonna use this for and i'm like i'm not gonna use it for anything i'm gonna turf it as soon as i get home so i just stop put the camera away and then it's kind of, it's, it's, it's almost kind of freeing to kind of walk away from that, that you've, that I can kind of just, I know what'll work and what won't work. So 
This reminds me of in, uh, sorry to interject, but in wedding photography, usually a, a very well-meaning amateur photographer uncle will approach you and say, you know, it'd be really cool if we did this. And you're setting it up and you're like, this is not going anywhere, but I need to shoot it because there was, we do. Yeah, there was a couple, a couple years ago, I did, I shot a bunch of the uh, public art for the city of Waterloo and I was doing one, they're on uh, Father David Bauer Drive. They yeah. look like, they look like bonnets. Oh yeah, they're like uh, benches. Yeah, they're, yeah, I didn't even know they existed until yeah. they needed them shot. And I'm out there trying to frame stuff up and get them done. And these two guys on a bike came by, and I don't know if they were on something, but they were just going. They would not leave me alone. And I was just, I'm just humoring them. He's like, oh, yeah, that's kind of neat. He's like, look at the moon through the tree. It's amazing. I'm like, no, it's not, but okay. And then, like, I'm like, I'm running out of light, and like, I just, I snapped, and I'm just like, what do you guys want? What do you want from me right now? (laughs) Basically, and I'm just like, I may have said some bad words to them, and I'm just like, I'm trying to work. Mm -hmm. Um, And then they finally, you know, took off, which is great because I was, I just lost it. I'm just like, go away. You don't know what you're talking about. But yeah, yeah. I, uh, I find that hard too. It's actually the way that me and Marshall met were, was at the park with our children. We were, um, you know, stay-at-home parents who were working from home. And um, I used to, because I am an introvert, I used to dread the park question. So how old's your little one? I think, oh God, stab me in the eye with a fork right now. Yeah. But you know, you, you work up the courage to be like, oh, she's, you know, six months old. And how about yours? And do you guys live around here without being creepy? You know, all that kind of stuff. And um, luckily, Marshall didn't give me that creep vibe from the beginning. Right. I might have actually creep done thing. it to you. No, not at all. <laughs> I might have. But I find it's the same when you're, when you're out and you're trying to shoot something, you're trying to get something done. You, I might even have a family I'm shooting, maybe in Uptown Waterloo. Yeah. And somebody wants to stop and say, oh, what are you shooting? Is that a cannon? Or you so like, yeah, what do you, what like, you, what do you got there? Yeah. You taking pictures? <laughs> a job. <laughs> I got a job right How now. How many times <laughs> someone have asked me if I'm taking pictures when I'm <laughs> literally holding a camera to my face? <laughs> And really? like, oh god! <laughs> or you see, they're the well-meaning. They are well-meaning. They are, or the way that people are attracted to like um, CTV shows up. Like, yeah. So there's a van. Yeah. Out comes the camera, yeah. and just it's like. So what are you shooting? Yeah, what's it's going like on samples here? at Costco. <laughs> <That's> yeah. Right. <laughs> Everybody just so like, the bacon's the coming out. Come in. <laughs> yeah. Even for the thing I was doing on the the thing for the record, the the story I did for them in the morning. Um, it was about this gravel pit that they they want to put in like way out in Wilmot. Right. And so I'm taking a picture of the subjects in front of this like water conservation sign. And then the neighbors are just sort of drifting out on like literally onto the highway. Mm-hmm. And they're just sort of in my Let's shot. Talk and I'm just about like this gravel pit. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was like, guys, could you just yeah. take ten steps out of here? <laughs> yeah. I'm not the um, one doing the hard hitting story. I just need to take the photo, right? But <laughs> You got to respect that they they're interested in talking. Yeah, they were. It wasn't. It was just sort of funny that yep. they just started to start drifting, oh, yeah. and I'm like, who yep. are these people? So, <laughs> in another podcast, from? Sarah talked a bit about uh, be, as a photographer being a bit of an island unto yourself. Like, yeah. just you can spend a lot of time just by yourself and not even interacting with other photographers. You know, mm-hmm. you don't have to be part of a collective or anything right. like that. And uh, is that how you feel? You can have this, uh, you know, life that um, works well with your introvert. Yeah, yeah, because it, it's <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's something that I can just kind of get up and do whatever, whenever I want. we were just up at a cottage for a week, and I know because I follow you on Instagram. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you follow my stories, <laughs> my crazy stories. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's just like it's like well, the kids asleep now, so I can you know, I can uh, go out and shoot for a couple hours, and that's actually the night that I broke the camera. So I came oh. home just like. <laughs> Um, but my wife was very understanding. She was cool about it, but I was very, very not happy. Do you print off many of your photos? No, I, I, I don't print my own just because printers are cheap, but printer ink is yeah. like gold. It is insanely yeah, expensive. Yeah, and it like, also we have, like, doesn't last. It's no, a temporary like, we, photo. We bought a printer at like Superstore for like 50 bucks, and like the ink is like $90. There was a story in the States of a guy who was being fined like 60 grand because he kept buying printers at like Walmart or wherever and like busting them open and selling the cartridges on craigslist yeah and just leaving the busted printers on his yard they were there were mountains of them yeah it kind of looked like that place down on like uh cedar street 
yeah. where it's like recycle your electronics here it's near egg roll king have you seen that there's like a huge oh yeah yeah of, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it's like that but it was these guys entire yard so <laughs> what, i'm wondering if his profit on selling these cartridges yeah, was really more working? than the sixty thousand dollar fine he incurred for having them all over oh, his I'm yard guessing not <laughs> it's not that's a dreaded question for me as a photographer too everyone says where do you get your photos printed and i'm like i don't know where do you get yours printed no the quality photo. is gone yeah. totally downhill Here's what I'd recommend if you want to hang it on your wall. Yeah, there's Here's a place. Here's the one place to give them to grandma. There's a place. Uh, there was a place in Waterloo. I think they're still there, but I don't know. Um, but there was like he would. He had a like a, a summer home in like Arizona mm-hmm. or winter home, I guess. <laughs> um, and he would just sort of he would just leave, and like I wouldn't know if he was open or not. And um, oh, was he on Laurel Street? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was great. He was great. I know. Yeah, I don't and know then, if he's like, there right now. I don't know. Not. I don't know. <laughs> and then like the one time he had his friend covering for him, and he was not very good. Oh no. And he didn't know how to work the debit machine, so I had to pay in like exact change. I'm <laughs> like, blood. I I gotta <laughs> yeah. come back with like 17 cents because oh, I. Uh, <laughs> and yeah, so there's a place in Toronto that I use for when I do get stuff printed. Yeah. Um, I've used Toronto Imageworks before, and they're good because that's mm-hmm. what uh, Edward Bertinsky founded, so they know what they're doing. Um, I can't even think of the name of the place that I go to, but they they do great work. Mm-hmm. Um, but there's yeah, there's really no places in town. It's not like it used to I've be. done like I've have gone to Costco. Mm-hmm. Just take off the auto correct because that'll ruin mm-hmm. your pictures. Oh, for me, it will. <laughs> no, yeah. Pro tip for anybody out there: take off all that the magic yeah, wand a, yeah. and the, the not the Photoshop magic wand. Yeah, I remember. I remember getting like just because that's when I was still using an actual physical portfolio to mm-hmm. carry around, and I was getting just like a bunch of five by sevens done it when Blacks was still around. Yeah. And then I just Wasn't picked them. Ago. No. And I just remember picking them up and I'm like, you guys like ruin these. Like they just, cause it was like a big shadowy shot and like, oh, we can crank the light up on that yeah, one. Yeah. <laughs> like, no, I have no to good. admit though, I, one of my first jobs in the photography world was at a one hour photo lab at Glanstega Mall. Oh really? Sometimes I just was not in the mood <laughs> and your pictures print, were coming print, bad. Print, print. It was an awful, pl- in, in an hour, the pressure, mm. right? Sometimes the You must have seen some wrong. interesting pictures. Of- I saw some stuff. Yeah. Because <laughs> we didn't have that role, the, um, yeah. Our print processor didn't run through the window like it does in right. the American movies right. that you always watch. Yeah. Uh, no, I saw some stuff and, and people would come in with their film and say, so these are a little sensitive. I'd be like, like how sensitive? Or I'm like mm. 17 working in this. Is this place, like right? illegal? Yeah, I, and <laughs> yeah. I mean, I didn't, I didn't even know what kind of, you know, 17 year old girl in 1990, whatever. Um, <laughs> you know, I, I didn't know what questions I could even really ask. I was, I was always just sort of like, okay, let's, let's see. There were a few times mm-hmm. when I got my cooler friend to develop them because I was just, yeah. I had seen things before. <laughs> a lot of piercings. I want to ask about uh, <laughs> this. Is a I'd like to hear from both of you on this. Uh, with regards to your, your body of work and the longevity of it. So um, I've written over 700 columns, newspaper columns for the Wireless Chronicle now. Mm-hmm. And the and so the first so many hundred are no longer online. They're just gone into somewhere, yes. right? Yeah. right. Um, so what I did was I cut every single one of them out of the newspaper and I make a photocopy, a it. glossy paper, and that goes into a binder, right? So I have... I'm, I'm controlling my body of work. For me, this is as permanent as it gets, yeah. right? Yeah. Because I simply don't know where it could end up. I've written lots of articles for online magazines that the day comes where you can't, I don't know where they went, they're gone, right? Yeah. So this is my attempt at controlling my Your archive, bo- my, archive yeah. my body of work. So I'm intrigued when uh, I think about your work and how you're, uh, I guess you're okay with the idea that you know it's out there it's on a website it's in various forms mm-hmm. uh, online but you don't feel the need to print off all your best photos and no but them. i'm almost wondering if i should now <laughs> <laughs> marshall you've been an inspiration <laughs> just going home to because there's like there's lots like i'm in a photo group um with mark walton actually. okay yeah i actually wanted to get to that oh yeah and uh there's a guy in the group uh carl griffiths fulton and he recently just took all of his work and threw it at the dump. He just got rid of it all. Yeah. And it's like, he was, he was, it was so cathartic. Cause it's like, what am I going to do with this stuff? Wow. And like, I don't know if I could do that yet, <laughs> well, um, but his is all printed too. Like he worked in film. Um, yeah. so I mean, I have, I have a couple hard drives full of, um, even just like my raw original shots. And I, like a couple weeks ago, I'm just like, I don't know if I need these. Cause I'm not going to go back and reprocess these You're images. Not. No. So and- like, and then I'm just like, Am I gonna regret if I just hit delete and go what and just like no, turf but those them? those external hard drives are gonna become obsolete. That's the thing because so, they're they're taking up space. I mean, I have all my process. If it's if my process shots 
go, then I'm going to be upset. But yeah. like the raw ones, like the source things, I don't need those anymore. Yeah. The earth, one I've just... got is I've got in my basement hundreds and hundreds of bootlegged concerts on cassette tapes <laughs> that I thought, well, one day I'll just put them all on CD, right? Yeah. And, and it's passage of time and now CDs are yeah. gone and now yeah. it's kind of like... Well, actually, you... I, Cassettes are going to I'll help you out with that. I know what you need to do. And you okay. can actually use this. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> you can use but but even, even still, like, when's my life ever going to... When am I ever going to sit and put my Well, how do you picture your retirement one day? Yeah. You know? Yeah. Not with a cassette tape? No. No. <laughs> Maybe going to see more live music. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Let's talk about photo re. Yeah. I want to talk about that because when I saw... Um, well, so when Mark Walton was here and we were looking through Photo Review. Yeah. Photo which is, re a, is the a magazine. magazine yeah. Yeah. Photo Review is the magazine. Yeah. Uh, I saw your name there and I was like, oh, this is exciting. <laughs> What's he going to have Yeah, I'm in, in the there? next What's issue. What's the connection? Yeah. yeah. So you're in the next issue. Tell yeah. us everything. <laughs> Tell us about the group. Tell us about the, the issue. Um... It's been around for a couple of years. Mark started it. Mm -hmm. um, what can I say about it? Um, it's just with with a with a. I think there's like seven or eight core members, um, and we're just uh, we're just trying to you know we learn from each other. It's mm -hmm. a it's a great group for learning. Um, we'll meet, we used to meet like once a month. That hasn't happened in a while, especially over the summer. Um, but we'll have these critique sessions um, where we just bring in a photo or it will either bring in a print or it'll project up and we'll have five minutes and everyone can say what they like about it, what they don't like about it. Um, and it's really great because it's from photographers that are trying to get better and it's not like, you know, showing it to your mom. Yeah. They're going to say it's good no matter yeah. what. Like I want to know what, or to competition sometimes. Like it yeah. sounds like this is not a competitive group. No, not at all. This is a place for learning and, yeah, and li to, lifting just everybody to up. to be fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So we had the, the magazine come out maybe about a month ago. Um, so it's going to be, there's going to be, to start, it's going to be quarterly. So we're going to have four to start. I'm not sure if it's going to go further than that. I don't know how much I'm actually allowed to say. I just know I'm in the next issue. Sean Puckett, who... Uh, he was actually the artist in residence uh, in Kitchener a number of years ago. He's a photographer. He lives in Toronto now, but he's writing my article. Um, so he just, uh, he sent me a bunch of questions. I sent him, he originally, he asked for like, you know, between 100 and 200 photographs. I'm like, okay, I've got plenty. And it was actually harder than I realized to pick. I ended up sending him 173, which I thought was a good enough, uh, good enough amount. Right. Um, and so he could use that to kind of figure out what he thought would work best for showing. Uh, then he sent me 12 or 13 questions, which okay. took like a couple hours to answer. They weren't like just like yes or no. Like right. it was like, you know, describe your process. What, you know, you know, there's a lot of, a lot of good questions there. So that, so, cause the magazine's out, which is right around when my second child is due. So it's like, it's, it's pretty crazy. Like it's just a lot Exciting. of stuff is happening right now. So, um, yeah, so we're supposed to have I like, did not the, see that on Instagram. I feel betrayed. Oh, <laughs> yeah. there was one, there was one, <laughs> I must have there was it. one. Yeah. We kept it secret for quite a while. Yeah. So. I hope you have your own bomb park to uh, put your kid on a swing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, meeting other parents is, is half the, the fun yeah. you know, when you're home with kids. Yeah. She's, uh, She's actually gotten to the point where our, our daughter, Lucy, we have a daughter now. She's almost four. She'll be four in November. Oh, that's a great age. But she's, uh, she's gotten to the habit of actually using our phone to take pictures. And oh, it's yeah. actually really interesting to see her take pictures. Like oh, yeah. she, 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 it's like he, she can watch her do it. And it's like, she's really thinking like, she's like actually composing. And I'm just like, this is really cool. Cause I've seen some of the pictures and like, this actually is not bad Yeah. for someone who is like four. The four year olds <laughs> know how to use the light meter in an iPhone, right? Like <laughs> there's some 40, 50, 60 year olds that I've just taught that too. Now just, just tap the dark spot. It'll be okay. You know? I always laugh. I see photos my mother took and, uh, with, Seems she had no regard for like where the lamp is, no. you know what I mean, and light switches and all these things in the background. <laughs> it's like I guess she just ignored them, you know, like just. It wasn't important. No, yeah. <laughs> yeah. they make for some funny photos, though. They yeah. do. Yeah. yeah. Um. So, and uh, tell us more about the photo re group, though. So, like, how did you get to be part of that group? Uh, how did that? I can't even remember how that started. Um, but it just uh, we start. I remember the very first time we had a critique. It was uh, Mark, myself. Darren White and Carl Griffiths Fulton, the other member. I, Darren doesn't do much with the group anymore, um, but we were at what was Imbibe, part of the museum downtown. Um, and we just had our little critique there, it was just the four of us. Um, and uh, yeah, it was just, uh, it's just, it's a lot of fun. It's it's inspiring. I always, every time I go to one of the, the, the get togethers, I'm always happy that I went because mm -hmm. everyone's so great. 
Um, it's just because it's just this great supportive group. Um, we had the magazine launch, like I said, like a month or two ago, and we actually had it at the KW Art Gallery. It was like a pretty big event. Like a lot of people came, like a lot of people that I, I recognize a lot of people there, but I also recognized more people than I didn't recognize, which is great that like that many people we got to come out to the launch. So the magazine has its own kind of distinct color palette to it too. Don't you find like, uh, yeah, the, the, a lot of them were black and white. Yeah. Um, and, and even the color is not whatever color is in there is not mm, really vibrant. Yeah. I can't like for mine, for my issue, my issue, <laughs> <Look at me. laughs> um, I've only got one black and white image that's going to be in there. Everything else is color. So I hope that's not too much of a spoiler, but, um, that's okay. We're still excited. <laughs> Yeah, but it's 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 exciting. I mean, the 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 next uh, the next launch is just going to be like a. It's just going to be at like a cafe or something. We're not going to do a big big thing about it. So, um, um, did you not do something at Wordsworth Books? Is that not it's Word? actually for sale there? I yeah, know it's that. for sale there. I've been in groups. Well, not actually not that many. I've actually only been in one other camera group before, and it was it was okay. Like it was just sort of. And I'm going to make myself sound really cocky here, but like a lot of the people weren't that great that sounds really really awful no it, it doesn't because I'm, I'm trying not to say and i'm probably gonna have to cut this out later but i found with any photographers i try to get together with or <clears throat> bond with or talk shop with it always sort of turned into a, like a whose lens is bigger yeah it's just a big pissing don't match. Really mean lens. <laughs> like yeah like are we here to talk about art and process and, yeah. and share tips and and tricks and all that kind of stuff or are we just out here to prove ourselves? Or the, yeah. wor- the worst is amateur astronomers together. Oh, yes. It's all like, you know, <laughs> middle-aged middle age white men just <laughs> yeah. all just trying to brag about their telescopes and their astrophotography yeah. and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I noticed on your website you have a long list of accomplishments. And you've okay. had some shows, some, some gallery shows. Okay. Am I right about that? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. I, I have a feeling Joe. You Joe's, look like you're questioning like, me. That's who? I, mean. I have a feeling Joe's not going to tell us about them until yeah, we I think ask so. about them. I yeah. think so. <laughs> I want to know is if you have anything coming oh. up, or what if you have any plans for yourself in the works. Like, I actually sounds like your hands are full. Yeah, I like see some stuff. <laughs> well, I actually I'm in a show tomorrow night. Awesome. <laughs> Very um, random. In podcast time, this probably would have already happened, but yes. What's the What's the show? It's just sort of ran- I'm I'm part of this group called Arts Pay. Yeah. Um. Oh right. And uh, it's it's to get people out in the community to understand that art is worth something and that they need to be paid basically. Yeah. yeah. Um. And it's really great because you can. It's like a thirty dollar a year fee, which is actually pretty cheap, and you get discounts at places. Um, but they promote you. You can get, you can, uh, you can find out about shows like this one. I lately, I haven't been doing a lot of shows. Um, the last few that I've done have been because I have stuff printed and framed yep. in my basement and it's ready to go. Mm-hmm. Um, but I've, ha- I've done a lot of shows in the past. Um, we did, I did three of the box art shows. I don't know if you went to Oh yeah. Those. Box art. Yeah. It was in 11, 12 and 13, the last three. Um, and that was a really cool experience. I remember the first one I did, I did was in Rumpelfeld. Right. Um, and I sold, I think about five, five of them, which is like, That's this would great. be great if I could yeah. make a living out of this. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> not so much. Yeah. Um, so it, it's, it's hard to, at least with photography, um, because, you know, it's, it's simple enough to take a picture. Like when you, well, when it all blows down. But like, if I want to enter something into a show or put on a show, like do an exhibition, it is it's so expensive, it's so expensive. to and not just print, print but to, to but to, to frame them. Yeah. Oh yeah. Like I used to just frame stuff myself, and I'm just like, but I can't do that. I can't put well good work out and then just I'm using like IKEA frames. Yeah. I can't do that anymore. No, like it it's just it's got to be done by you know a professional to yeah. get to to you know to to present it properly and like. If I want to do a show, like I've always wanted to do a show at the, uh, the, the rotunda at Kitchen City Hall. I always thought that would be kind of cool. It'd be really cool to get like a bunch of like 16 by 20 prints done. They'd be huge. But I'm like, that would cost so much. So much money. And then if they don't sell, which is highly likely, mm-hmm. <laughs> at least from my experience, I just, it's hard to, it's hard to, I don't know if it's just photography, but I oh, just, I think it's, it's all art. Yeah. That's it. I think that's it. Marshall and I talk about this a lot, actually, about, um, 
you know, everyone loves art. Art, there's always going to be a place for art. Everyone always needs art. Art mm-hmm. is part of our breathing, living culture. Mm-hmm. But people aren't willing to pay for it. No, they're not. And they're that's not. Such, and and it's, they undervalue that's where, you. That's where it gets mm-hmm. frustrating. I've been in a few where, like, it was like, I think it was like in Uptown Waterloo. It was part of the Button Factory where they had like the art alley. That's mm-hmm. what it was, the art alley. And I remember you get like a cage to put your stuff on. And then there's, it was partially my mistake because I brought like big pieces. I'm like, no one's going to just be walking by and like, oh, I'll buy that and just right. clunk along this like giant, like 30 inch frame with them. Um, but I remember like a few people came up and just like, oh yeah, that's nice. I shot a picture like that yeah. once. I'm like, I, I don't care. I took this really cool picture of the sunset one time. That's what <laughs> yeah. I get a lot. Yeah. 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 Did you do it consistently? Yeah. Yeah. Tell me more. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Sorry to all you amateur yeah. photographers out there. We love you. We really do. <laughs> I'm going to lose some fans. No, I don't think so. I think everyone knows that that's part of the process, too. Um, I've I've got a good wrap-up question on this. One of my favorite books is called uh, How Art Can Make You Happy. Okay. And uh, something you said earlier in our talk here really touched on that. And uh, the author talks about how just going outside, like leave your house and walk, right? Mm -hmm. And look at the way sun reflects off a brick, right? Mm -hmm. Or a manhole cover. Yeah. Or a shadow or anything. And just... Um, how this should <laughs> bring you happiness, yeah, right? Yeah. And uh, I feel like that's more than money, more than anything else, uh, more than ego. Um, this is sounds like that's your prime motivator to, yeah, to get I, out with your camera. Can I you talk found, about that? I found that lately, like, um, like I do do some commercial work. I don't do a ton. I mean, it's just I can only do so much on the side with a full-time job. I can't, you know, it, I can't. I don't want to like burn out for sure. Um, and that even with that, and you know, that too, like <laughs> everything else is going to be on hold, but like doing this sort of work, like, um, like a lot of the work I do, I'm just like, I have to do it during non business hours and that's not always possible. So I have to really just sort of, you know, just do what I can. Um, but yeah, a lot of it lately has just been, I've just really been thinking about it and I'm just like, I'm just kind of doing this for myself a lot of the time. Like I post, I'll post something on Instagram. I posted one today. And I think it's fantastic. I haven't seen it yet. And there's like, there's other ones that I post. Yeah. Like some get like, one of them recently, which I really like, just went through the roof. Like it's like far and away like the most popular one I've ever posted. I don't know if it, I no, just posted is, it no, at the, just, at the, it's at the time right time. algorithm. Sometimes I don't I hear always stuff th- and I have that's to the go thing, back and get it. Because I thought five o'clock on Wednesdays was the best time. I don't time. know if that's passe now. L- lately check. it has not been, because yeah. I tried it and I'm just like, I'm done with five o'clock that Wednesdays. Might, Screw that it. might be passe. <laughs> Um, yeah, a lot of it's just like I just do it for myself because I get a lot of I, it just, I get a lot of pleasure out of it. It's just that's the whole that's the whole that's that's the, that's the driving thing for me right now, yeah. and that's I think that's the right way. So it is the that's right for way. me. I mean, you know, other people are going to do it differently, but that's just that's what I get out of it, and I enjoy it. So I think about all the people who like you know they save their whole year saying on this vacation so they can see you know the Eiffel Tower or mm-hmm. you know Niagara Falls or this certain beach in the ocean, and those things are all incredible and phenomenal, but. If you are, if you can just appreciate your own space that you live in, mm-hmm. there's incredible, beautiful things like right in your it's own everywhere. backyard. Right? You just got to look. Yeah. just got to look a little bit harder. Or you can just look at Joe Martz's Instagram account. <laughs> yeah. Stay inside. Or Joe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Let's wrap up. Joe, thank you so much for coming. No, thanks for uh, having me. This is great. super to talk to you. I'm sorry. We're sitting in the dark. That's okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the, light of, the light of the laptop's nice. It's a nice ambiance. Joe, where can everybody find you? Uh, so my website is just my name it's joemarts.com yep. everything else is just like my twitter handle is Joe Marts. my instagram handle is Joe Marts. and it's j-o-e-m-a-r-t-z for those wondering else? i have a facebook business page i don't do anything with it i just it's like i had one and then i just like i don't use it i'm getting rid of it then i'm just like i'm gonna do it again <laughs> and then i haven't posted anything on there in Same. like six months it's i just should just delete it i should just delete facebook anyway people can survive without it marshall uh, does not exist online other than his uh, article and the uh the other pieces he's written for other publish it published mm-hmm. yeah I, no, I have no phone yeah wow. publications yeah that's the word introvert process yeah. thing <laughs> Thanking, thanking, thanking. Thank Thanks you. for coming and chatting with two yeah. strangers. Yeah, I know. That was very brave of you. <laughs> I'm not sure I would have done it. <laughs> and now that it's dark, we can kill you. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> During these challenging times, everyone deserves a taste of luxury. So create tonight's indulgence from the little things you love. Right now, let Vincenzo's help you with your shopping needs through online ordering with either pickup or delivery options. Check their site, vincenzosonline.com, for current shopping hours. Call them at 519 741 
1437 or email them at info at vincenzosonline.com. Hey all, thanks for meeting us in Bond Park. Please like, rate, and subscribe to our podcast on the platform that you're listening to. And follow us on Instagram and Twitter at Bond Park Podcast. Original music by Alan Lung.